Why? Why does? So, yeah. Uh, sorry, everyone, for the delay. It's been a little bit strange. We had uh we had a lot of trouble logging me into the account. Uh, so that's the main reason for lateness. And then there were so to, like, to make it worse, there were some solid technical issues afterwards as well. So there we are. Uh, but we're here, 20 minutes late. Um, whoop. Okay, yeah, hello everyone. Thanks for- thanks for coming. So, yeah, there's a lot of- there's a lot of technical issues, actually. Because when I got in, the- basically, they done- no, not new camera. That- that's the thing. Um, the way that the, they did the overlay for the last lecture, um, was that they had two people, so they made the cameras smaller. And they had the board different, and they used a different screen resolution for their settings. So I came in, and I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> so usually we go, we access, like, I access the account, like, half an hour early to figure out all this stuff. But I, I, I figured it out in, like, seven minutes, and there's, like, some imperfections. Um, like, the overlay is not amazing. So there we are. Um... I don't know how big this should be. Let's make it sort of big. But like my camera is supposed to be bigger. It's just they cut it down because they needed two cameras in the space. But anyway, hello everyone, baby shamble, go Dave. Um, hello Xdova. Um so um let's I don't know, let's start off with uh with our lecture. Wait, wait. Wait. Oh, they're weird. They they're doing, um, oh no, what's going on? Okay, fine, um, yeah, I, I don't know what happened. The thing is, they, they do the overlay super differently. Like, for example, they, uh, to, to the way I do it, like, they do screen share and I do window capture things like, uh, sorry about that. Okay, should be fine from now on, should be. Um. The Goban, yeah, the Goban isn't a window, and they have the overlay super weird, the way that they did it. I'm still, yeah, this isn't how usually I would do overlays. So I think it's just miscoordination of, of, of overlay usage. Okay, but uh, let's, let's, also I'm a boomer with overlays. Um, but there we go. So anyway, so the topic of, yeah, that's just weird indeed. Yeah, Go, Goban's not a window, it's, they, anyway, yeah. It's, uh, also usually because I'm used to not having people, um, because I'm not, I'm used to not having the overlay I want on the NGD scene, right? I, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, I usually have my own scene that I want to import into the, the, uh, the software, but I couldn't find it. <laughs> So yeah, it, anyway, a perfect storm of things that went wrong. Um anyway, now that we're here, welcome everyone. Let's let's kick off the lecture. Um so the the lecture topic for today is as usual inspired by some of the more traumatic moments I've had reviewing NGD games. Um and as a beginner, right? you're sort of taught to not hold on to individual stones, right? You're told, oh, these, um, you know, this one stone doesn't matter. You shouldn't care about this one stone. One stone, you know, Go is a game that is, you know, you play as an individual, but the stones are a collective and they work towards a goal. And if you need to sacrifice some stones to do that, 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 that that's fine, right? Um, and when you get too interested in one stone or even one group, you don't play go well because you're serving you're serving one part of something that should be a collective. Hello Duck Hat, hello Longing Cat, my favorite username on Twitch, almost. Um and it is true that you shouldn't necessarily care about single stones or even sometimes about groups. But I wanted you know, this lecture is sort of intending to elaborate on that and discuss when you should care about stones and groups, which ones you should care about and why. Um, and I have a list of examples that I have from NGD uh, games 
right? It's from some of your games, also from a couple of private students' games. Um, so I've, um, you know, I've compiled a, a list of examples and we're going to talk through them. And what I'm going to ask in each example is, do you want to save this stone? Do you care about it? Or do you just want to leave it? Do you not care about it? And I think I've ordered the, the example sort of in or order of difficulty, and the concept will get a little bit harder as we go along. Um, so yeah, that's the format. Oh, hello, Sandman. Your, your overlay is complicated and weird and different res like screen resolution to mine. Um, nice interactive lecture. Yeah, I mean, I, I very much welcome uh, questions and comments, right? That's the whole point. You, yeah, I'm, I'm here to, to answer whatever you have to discuss. And I, yeah, mm, I, I like, I like, I like people chatting. You can choose the other scene too. What other scene? There, there's like, there is no other scene, Sandman. There's this one. But anyway, we'll discuss it later. Um, miscoordination between NGD teachers. Great. Um, so this is an NGD game that I reviewed maybe a couple of weeks ago, right? And this is going to seem very easy, I think, to all of you, right? But it's still a mistake that a lot of you will make, I think, at a subconscious level when you're not specifically thinking about this topic. So this question is going to look a bit strange. Do you care about this stone? It's White's turn. Do you care about this stone? I think the answers to, to this one will be rather uniform. Mm. So, I mean, this game, well, well I would, wouldn't I? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this is, I didn't want to call anyone out, but yeah, this is Sander Vaduk's game, and Sander Vaduk was white. Um, yes, in about 100 moves, yeah. Yeah, uh, Chris F01 says no. Okay, so there seems to be a consensus. This stone isn't necessarily the most important stone on the planet. A strong player once said, ghost stones are like family, sometimes you need to sacrifice them. <laughs> uh, that's great. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, this stone, I think if you looked at the empty board, right, even if the person in question that played this move next, right, it, 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 you know, I think if Sander Baduk saw the board now, he wouldn't care about this, right? Especially in the context of a lecture about the importance of stones, because this stone, you know, I, I think I would wager that if this stone weren't here, right, White would never, ever, ever consider playing this move, right? Like, even if you're not going to play the best move in Endgame, you're still going to play a better move than this one, right? And the fact that you're capturing this one stone can matter. Like, you know, capturing a stone can matter, or it might not matter, right? It depends on the stone. And in this case, this stone doesn't matter. It's not doing anything. I think white will get one extra point, right? The difference is one extra point, basically. Um, and it looks a bit nicer because you're capturing a stone. However much we are told as beginners that such a stone doesn't matter, it's still more attractive. So if we're not specifically thinking about the topic, I think some players, you know, I'd say San Sander Baduk is about 5Q, right? Um, you know, not at all a, a, a weak player, and this kind of mistake is very fundamental, right? If we're not actually considering the topic, right? Um, Age-old proverb, sacrifice family to gain sent it. <laughs> I don't know, it's a shape move. It, yeah, it's, it, it looks good now because you're capturing the stone. Like, locally, it's the best shape, right? But this stone shape doesn't matter at this stage of the game. It's just points, right? I like to think of mattering as in strategic value. It has to do about the relative strength and weakness of the group. Yeah, yeah. So a uh, Nordic Godot, I guess that's anti-controlling the account, makes a good point. I'm going to develop that concept as we go on in the lecture. So right now I'm saying this stone doesn't matter. I haven't exactly evaluated why it doesn't matter, but I intend to do that in the next example, right? 
I think here we can all say intuitively, this stone isn't very important, right? Um, but I'll elaborate why as we go on. So, yeah, good point. Group thinking OP. Yeah, group thinking OP. It's, uh, it's the next example actually is about th that. Um, anti here, yes. I think it was also that that group was in danger earlier, so there's some residual make it extra safe. Uh, I see. Hmm, makes a bit of sense because that group was sort of like, white was sort of protruding into black's moyo and like the group was, was not so strong, right? Um, uh, but there we go. History bias, how amateurish of you, Kappa. Um, yeah, no one does that ever. Um, so there we are. I think, um, this example we can all agree on. Let's move on and, and check the next example. Uh, initially I'd intended to make this example go third, but I think it's good to go for this one next. Uh, this game was played between, I think, like high, like maybe like 9Q strength players in the NGD kind of thing. Um, and I think it'll help further define what we think is a stone that's doing something versus a stone that isn't doing something, right? Um, can white get anything on the top right? Wait, oh, oh, this is relative to the to the old question. Uh, sorry, to the old game. Uh, oops. Uh, my bad. I should have read chat earlier. Oh, uh, upper right corner. Yeah, upper. Uh, this is interesting because okay, I can show something funny now. Uh, upper right corner would be called black territory. That would be a topic for invasion lecture. I would say at a gl like when I reviewed this game, one of my the main things I was talking about was that white should have invaded this earlier. And at some point I was like, okay, it's too late. You can't, you know, you can't um, invade it, right? But later in the game, white invaded and like, like really late in the game, white realized, like counted, I think, and realized he was losing. So white tried to live at the time when it should be the most difficult. This isn't related to the lecture. This is just funny since you mentioned, yeah, no, but also yes, as Sander Badu puts it. And here... Black actually messed up a bit, and white could very easily have just played this and lived, right? Uh, and, and white would have won, but white unfortunately missed this, and yeah. But I mean, uh, probably a lot of uh, time pressure was involved at the end of the game and things like that, and people are tired. Yeah, ouch. It's uh, so close yet so far, but there we go. And this isn't related to the lecture, it's just since someone mentioned it, yeah. Uh, for most of the game, like for example, at this point, Oh, you even see, this is like the, the STF file I made for the review. I'm saying, oh, I think white should at some point play something like A and go for some invasion. But anyway, that's, that. yeah, that's a no, but also yes, I see, indeed. Um, anyway, so let's go over to the next example. Uh, that was a bit off topic, but there we go. Oh, Godave mentioned, I often suffer the opposite. Oh, this group was always safe. I can't possibly ever get weak. That's something that's going to happen later in this lecture as well. So that's good. Um, see yesterday. Oh yeah, that was a bit of a roller coaster game. Um, so anyway, so next example is... I, I think here I will try to more formally define why we should care about stones or not, right? Um, and let's go to this example. So. What do you think about this stone? I'll set the scene a bit. So black has sort of fallen behind because look at this monster ponuki shape that white got over here. And white's just better on points. So black is definitely worse, right? And black has sort of been trying to play in the middle and stir up some trouble and stuff. And given that context, do you think that Black's decision to let go of this stone was correct or not? That's that that would be the question I I advance to the audience. In the meanwhile, I I take a sip of water, but it's my last one because I'm out of water. Mm. So when we look at whether a stone is worth saving, right? Um, I, I'm sure that, 
uh, the black player in question was thinking, oh, it's one stone, it doesn't matter, right? Um, but certain stones, like some stones are more equal than others, right? Um, even though all stones are working together, some, some are more equal than others. So that's something we need to discuss. I'd say black should have saved. Without it, white becomes secure, too secure, too strong. Yes, yes, exactly. That's, that's the key point here that we need to look at. Look at how much black stone is doing, right? Let's let's look at let's look at let let like let's say black had connected, right? Uh, I think it depends on how dead the two stones are if you connect, which is hard to see. Um, how dead these two stones are? Well, let's consider. Actually, we can extend this discussion to how important these two stones are, right? Um. Let's say, in theory, right, let's say that white can play something like mm, this move, and white's like, I killed these two stones. <laughs> Animal farm and go, some stones are more equal than others. Yes, that was an in intentional reference. Um, also, I'm reminded of, of, of Jeff's uh, famous, uh, Jeff's also a teacher at the NGD, for those of you who don't, don't know, if anyone doesn't, but Jeff's like, a somewhat uh, famous maxim that communist like moyo is communism and he often makes political references in discussing go um so to answer sander baduk's uh, uh, comment about whether these two stones are al alive or not one concept that we can discuss is what is the value of stones that are completely captured versus the value of stones that are dead but aren't captured. Right? Um, white has quite a few cutting points, seems hard to capture, and the N11 cut might be more important than saving the two stones. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good point. N11 cut, right, might be more important than saving the two stones because this group is a little bit weak. Moyo is communism, it's great because it makes sense. Yeah. Um, so it, let's say that we let's look at what happened in the game. Black played here, white captured. This stone is never ever doing anything for black again, right? It's gone. It's off the board, right? These two stones, you could say that they might die, but you can't say that they won't be useful, right? So there's already, there's a hierarchy of how you lose stones, right? That's why a ponuki is such a powerful weapon, right? Um, because you're just eliminating the functionality of an opponent's stone completely without, you know, with no strings attached, right? So moyo is bad question mark, only if it's too extreme. Well, if you can make communism work, it's great, right? Yeah, that's why, that's why I play moyo, because when it works, it's like awesome. Problem is, it tends not to work. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hello, Yakago. Um, so let's consider what these stones, right? These stones of blacks that are currently not off the board, right? What they're doing, right? L maybe let's go here. White at the moment has two cutting points, right? And these two cutting points are actually pretty serious, right? Let's say it's black's turn. Black could push, and white can't really do this because, you know, black's gonna ladder you, right? Um, and black also has a threat here. Like, this group on, on top right isn't super alive yet. So black has some threats such as, uh, let's say... Um, maybe starting here and here. And there's already an imminent threat of, you know, black just killing you locally, and then you're not too alive yet, right? So by saving this stone, black has created a lot of options. So one and two. And these stones that Sander Baduk mentioned he's worried about are also important to that plan, but the point is white can't capture them in Ponuki. 
even if they are not, if it's not clear if they're alive or not, they're still useful. What happened in the game? And by the way, the game's this game's terrible for Black because, as far as I can tell, Black has no threats, like like not real threats. White will defend. Black will try to kill the top right, and unless White messes up, Black will fail. But the because Black's just too behind, as far as I can tell. The point being that after Black allowed White to get this Ponuki, White's never worrying about anything, ever. Like, this stone, as was pointed out earlier by um, by Baby Shambles, which is actually somewhat of a nice name, this White shape is all connected. So this, like, this cutting point doesn't matter, this cutting point doesn't exist anymore. White's just safe. So here, I think we can say that Black's stones, like Black's one stone, was actually quite useful and we needed to save it. Would have been a way for Black to complicate the game to use White's weaknesses. I mean, and, and th this isn't, I'm not saying that Black is behind so he needs to do this. Black should do this anyway, right? Um, whether he's ahead or not. Point being that in the game, it just so happens that the way the game transpired. Black has no chance now. The game's over. Um, just gotta be stronger than your opponent, then communism works great. When sometimes the capitalists don't realize the communist revolution until it's too late. <laughs> what is capitalism in Go? Cash, cash. Yeah, exactly, cash. Uh, in NGD, I'm signed as Kawabata, but anyway. Oh, yeah, I, I, I haven't gotten to review one of your games yet, but I saw that you're in the NGD. Welcome. Um... Every group for itself, just around territory. Yeah, that's why Moyo is hard to play. And again, we're going on a tangent, but who cares? Moyo is hard to play because the stones need to work together really well. Like, your shapes have to be strong, congruent, you know. when It's much easier to play like a capitalist. As a capitalist, you make points in your corners and on your sides, and you figure out your groups. And you can do those groups all independently of each other. Right, it's cash works regardless of the rest of the board. Walls w need a little bit more to work, so that's why it's harder, in my opinion. Oh, thanks. Yeah, God bless capitalism. <laughs> yeah, that's what like most of Europe says. Most of the European six sons are uh, infamous capitalists. Um. Anyway, so. Um, back to this move. I think. Now is a good time for me to sort of state a little bit more concretely why stones should be saved and why stones shouldn't, right? If we go back to this game, right? Um, wait, where where did it happen? We're close. Okay, there we are. This stone isn't doing anything. It's not cutting anything. It's not creating any threats, right? If we go to this game... This stone is doing everything, right? And when you decide whether to save a lone stone or even a group, you need to figure out what it's doing for you, right? Like, Go isn't a game where you're like, oh, my poor stone, let's save it. No, you're like, okay, what are you doing for me, right? And, and then you figure it out. Um, that's one concept of saving stones. It's not the only one, but... Essentially, individualism versus collectivism. I indeed, Jeff. Maybe state capitalism is the best strategy. Um, maybe state capitalism. I'm not quite sure. I'm finding it hard to decide what that is on the go board. What's dictatorship? If I had to guess, dictatorship is like, not only that you play Moyo, but that you create one area, right? Um... Like, you create one area, and you only care about that area. Which is a terrible doctrine. Like, that's the worst way to play Moyo. Um, because if you want to make points in the center, then you're going to lose. Um, the master is here. I wonder who's the master. Um, dictatorship is to deny all your weaknesses, sort of. Lesson started from, <laughs> from importance of stones to politics on the Goban, I guess so. Don't ask what you can do for the stones. Ask uh, what the stones can do for you. Yeah, I was sort of thinking of that quote. I'm also thinking of uh, that famous, is it a Bobby Fischer quote? Like, like, you need to help your pieces so your pieces help you. Sort of applies to groups and go. Um, 
think it I think I would save the stone, but I empathize with giving it up since I can visualize the wrong result of white g8. Oh, look at all these points. Better pull out the two stones. I see. Well, that I think is something... I, I think perhaps what you need to address then, Thunder Baduk, is what... Not only whether the stones will die, but how useful they are when they're dead. Because if if black dies... If, if these two stones are going to die, right? Then... It, first of all, it's not clear, and second of all, if they aren't dead, even if they're going to die, they have four liberties, so they have a lot of use out of them still, right? Dying with four liberties is infinitely better than dying with zero, <laughs> in terms of how much you can use the stones afterwards. Um, Jeff is the master, obviously. Fair enough. Master of political go, for sure. Um... It was more of a politics quote, but okay. Yeah. Your sentence sounds familiar to me. Yeah, I think it's big political background, I guess. I need to address my terrible reading. <laughs> um, Yeah, having better reading would help, but I, the point is that I don't need to read to tell that M13 is, is the best move here, right? It's not... Reading will help, but there are ways to cheat reading and not have to read. I'm an expert at that. Um, or I try to be. Um... Okay, so we've decided to uh, to save this stone. I hope, um, and let's let's move on to a different example. Mm. This, okay, I think, yeah, I think this one will be will be quite good because it it's another sort of important concept I think in in what you do with your stone. So let's. Let's go to move 105, as indicated by my notes. Um, this is a game played by uh, one of my private students. Um, and it's about like one done, one Q, one done level, I suppose. Um, always Hoshi, haven't played Hoshi in a while. I'm I'm getting tired of playing Hoshi because everyone sun suns it. And it's not like I mind getting sun sunned, it's just a bit monotonous. But anyway, there we go. Um, this position, right? Um, well, ah, so the loving son. I'm not sure. I don't watch the loving son too much these days. He's a Twitch streamer. For those of you who don't know, um, so okay, this position. My student's black, right? And you know, in a lecture about invasions, I might discuss how here I'm really, I really, really want black to play here and invade. During the game, my student wanted to invade. But he wasn't quite sure he could do it, so he decided to wait. And while he's waiting, he decided to um, to just play here, which sort of attacks these stones and does something. Right? He's just waiting. Um, so what I'd uh, ask the audience now is: Does White want to save these stones? How how much do we care about these uh, L nine stones? It's um yeah this this one is this one I think this one's an interesting question because it has I think it uses different concept to the previous discussions we want we had white still wants to reduce does that mean you save the stones or does that mean you like how do you want to reduce do you want to reduce by living do you want to reduce by sacrificing the stones. I'm not, I'm not sure what you mean by reduce. Black is all alive. Hmm, I'm slightly more worried about the right side white group. Saving it doesn't um doesn't make uh any black group weaker. I think yeah, that's a good point. That we need we're going to discuss that. That's a really really big point. Um something like h8. h8. Okay, h8 is very close to what white played in the game. The little white group looks unsalvage unsalvageable to me. So if I had to guess, white can save the stones. Okay, so let's... I'm not saying that it's good for white to save them. Right? But I think white can save them. Like, let's say that white plays this, and it is actually what happened in the game. If I had to guess, these stones aren't going to die. Right? But that doesn't mean white should save them. Um, 
So there's a couple of things we want to discuss here. People seem to be leaning. There's a couple of people that have suggested. Um, oh wait, somebody suggested J8. I I thought they suggested J8, but they suggested H8. My bad. So ah, so this is just a sacrifice. This would be fine. This is just an exchange. You give up the stones and you basically uh don't do much. Uh, that's fine. But in the game, White chose to save, uh, which is yeah I. I think it's a decision because white sort of sees this like area of his as impermeable and he's like the biggest thing to do is to save the, the center group right um so also using them uh and attack the left uh black group seems nice i'm not sure about attacking the left black group i mean i'm guessing that you're considering a variation such as h8 this and like get some free exchanges and then this but i mean this is it's possible right um it's just it doesn't seem too spectacular is my point but but it's fine uh, you could do this not directly okay disregarding the top side for now yeah the, that's what the players did might as well play s5 for white while deciding what to do uh, S5. Yeah, S5 would be a nice move because, I mean, this is unrelated to the topic of the lecture, but uh, S, this white group, black could sort of make life hard for it by playing this, this, and this. And it will probably live, but it'll suffer. So white, white could definitely consider just getting this out of the way to give his group a bit more space and play some endgame. But, well, this is um, a bit aside from the topic. Um, in the game, white chose to save. Uh, so, sorry to disrupt the lesson. What's the topic of the lesson? Got here a bit late. Uh, well, the the le the, le the topic of the lecture is meant to be the value of stones, and the format is that I show you a group of stones, right? Um, yeah, true. It's it's under me. A uh, format is I show you like a game, and I show you a group of stones, and I say, oh, should you save these or not? And I've chosen examples of people from various levels where they made the incorrect decision. Um, and here White chose to save. And there's a couple of reasons why this is really suspect. So the first reason we need to address, which uh, I think someone mentioned earlier. Uh, so um, yeah, so, so Vogalina mentioned correctly that L9 isn't doing anything right it's cutting off groups right it's cutting off the black groups but these groups are alive via killing c right um and therefore they aren't actually doing anything and they're mostly just cash right black's alive and strong on both sides so you're just fighting over cash right there this is cash in disguise almost um so that's the first thing we need to consider the second thing we need to consider, and that's something I haven't discussed yet, saving stones isn't necessarily a good thing. By which I mean, just because you're saving the stone doesn't mean it's an asset. It could be. Like, for example, let's let's go to this example. Uh, no, not this one. Well, let's go to this and this. No, wait, this is the wrong one as well. Where are you? Uh... Wait one second. Uh, Mia Boomer needs to find the game record. Um, da, 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 da. There we go. So this stone, black can save for the price of one move, right? That's it. You're not wasting more than one move, and the stone's alive, right? So after you save this stone, it's clearly going to be an asset for you. No added tax, let's say. Now let's contrast that with this situation where da, 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 dum, da, da, dum. white has chosen to save this, but this group isn't strictly speaking safe, right? Right, it's still hanging, right? It's still in trouble and it still needs to make life. And there's gonna be a price for that. As Marx taught us, it is the means of production that is the most valuable. Cash is secondary. Yes, I guess so. 
So here, white is saving around 15 points in cash, maybe up to 20. But look at the way he's doing it. And I'll show you the game as a reference for what's going on. So black, my student actually executed this quite well. So eventually what happened was... I'll do a quick run through. Okay, okay, this this was weird. Let's just pretend it was in this order. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah, that that was a bit of a blunder on my students' part, but uh, mistakes happen. Um, <laughs> I mean, just take the damn ponuki anyway. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> the issue for white here is that the side is getting opened and your group isn't connected, right? So while saving this group, white is eventually going to pay a big price. Like for example, here, black's already breaking into the into the top side. So remember when white, white did this only in order to save 15 points, right? But you're going to lose more than that on the side. Very likely. Um, I mean, and, and if you guys are thinking, I just want these three stones, I, I don't just want these three stones, I think. I think here black can go for much, much more, like this, this, and this kind of thing. Um, and live on the side, at least. So, the point is that white, white sort of regarded the top side as solid, but saving these stones is actually weakening the top side, right? These stones aren't an asset, they're a burden. Like, you're asking, like, you know, when you're saving a stone, you're asking, what is it doing for me? You also need to ask, what do I need to do for it, right? Uh, and there's another example of this that we're going to discuss in a little, a little bit. Um, Marks would suck at go, though. Equality of outcome doesn't win you the games. Yeah. You'd still be a good Moyo player, though. It's a gamble. Saving useless stones is the best way to get the most Dame points, yeah. He do it every single time, so... It would become a bit obvious. Like Marx playing Moyo. I mean, I'm sort of Marx on the Go board in that sense. Uh, I should stop being Marx. Would be good. Um, so the conclusion for these stones is actually not that they're invaluable. Because, you know, 15 to 20 points is worth something. But think of everything that you're losing in order to save them. If we go look at the game, there's even... Oscar Marque. Um, there's even a different kind of profit that Black's making. Look at how strong these stones got, right? Look at look at these two stones captured. Look at all these points Black's making. All of this because White chose to prioritize these five stones over the board situation, right? So I think that's also an important concept. What like what do you need to do to save the stones, right? Um Marukuso. Mm. And I think there is another example here, which is more extreme, but uses the same concept. So I think it might be good to take a look at it. Um, let's... Do, 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 do. Wait. Um... Okay, so, okay, I have a question for the audience, as, as usual. Are you going to save these guys? Now, usual, up until now, we've been talking, like at first we talked about groups of one or two stones, and as we've continued the lecture, we've, it's been escalating, I guess, uh, the size of the stones, um, which is sort of interesting. Does black want to save these stones? Um, could one thing that you only get to save those stones in Gotes so the worth can be even be divided by two? And on top of that, you have to give extra value to Black when he gets to play free moves as you save them. Yeah, well, well that's a very that's a very important thing you mentioned there, Aeronas. So, first of all, the price of saving a stone is one move, right? It's it's Sente, right? Or saving, if doing anything is one move. So that's something you always need to keep in mind. Um... So Sente and Gote is, is a dynamic you always have to keep in mind. And it's easy for people to forget that when they're evaluating, you know, sequences, Josekis. Um, 
I do the marks here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, also, as Aeronas mentioned, and on top of that, you have to give extra value to Black when you get to play free, free moves as you save them. That was the big thing about, in that other game, like, White sold everything in order to save those five stones. White sold the top side, White sold... Actually, it might... It might... I mean, I didn't show it until the end, but that fight ended, the last game we looked at, where White tried to save the five stones, White ended up dying with everything. Everything in that fight. Now, of course, there were some misreads along the way, but, you yeah. know. I've seen this, says the Miko. Yes, this is a very recently played NGD game. And I'd also do the marks. This is, yeah. Uh, White's stronger round, so these stones are only endgame. Big endgame, though. Very big endgame. That's why it's interesting. If Black doesn't save it, then White won't want to capture it. Go psychology as it, at its finest. I guess I guess you could play along those lines, yes. Um, until you are very experienced, you cannot bear the feeling of giving up such a large group. I need more experience. Okay. Um, let's see. So, I think in general, people have the intuition that they shouldn't save the stones. But the reason I included this example is that a lot of people seem to want, like still feel like saving them, right? Uh, when your fatal flaw is loyalty, yeah. Um, well, here, yeah, Black Black was too loyal here, also, for sure. Um, I feel the value of a move is often 15 points, so this seems big enough. That's, that's why this decision is somewhat reasonable when you look at the face of it, Sander Baduk. So, Okay, let's uh let's count let's count how many points this is worth. This is like one, two, three, four, five. These are lots and lots of points. These are twenty-four points, right? Twenty-four is a lot of points, right? As Sander Budu mentions, it seems big enough just on cash value, right? Um If you get to play two moves in the center, I'd leave that group with no worries. Also saving them hurts the outside as well. So you need to see what it takes to save them. Exactly. That's that as Godev, Godev says, that's exactly the point I want to develop here. So this group is actually big enough, right? It's worth so many points, right? 24 points at this stage of the game. Like solid cash, no questions asked, 24 points. Except it's not no questions asked. And that, that's what I'm here to talk about, right? Um, in the opening, it's also bigger than 15, closer to 20. In the opening? It's trouble understanding your comment. My apologies. Um, so, but anyway, let's, let's, let's go to uh, Godave's point that you have to see what it takes to save them. And I will just illustrate the game. I will just illustrate the game like, well, illustrate my point by showing you the game. Okay, so let's just replay the game. Right? And Black resigned here. And the reason Black resigned, Black shouldn't resign, like, look look at all these, I have like, Black could play A, Black could play B, Black could invade and fight, the game's not over, you know, come on, like, you're, don't respect your opponent that much, they could blunder, you know. Um, etc, etc, etc. Um, but Black resigned here because Black has nothing, right? Like, let's look at the position here. This is actually the Marxist dream. Like, using the comparison that Moyo is communism. I mean, look at this. It, it's great, right? Look at this area, right? Um, you know, just, just for an example, right, let's now play here, which is around about my instinct. I mean, look at it. It's beautiful, right? All these strong shapes, everything's working together. White plays here and, like, you play here, and black has, like, a hundred points in there. And I'm not exaggerating, right? So, black has a lot of potential there, right? Um, should be times, two times call me, yeah. Our Lord and Savior Katago will tell you also, I mean, Katago should say it's worth two times Komi. Um, so it's about 15 points, I guess. Like, opening moves are worth 15 points, technically. But also, I think when we say an opening move is worth 15 points, we don't count it the same way as when we count that this is worth 24. 
different styles of counting, I guess. Um, yeah, any other value than 2 times Komi will give weird results. Uh, black needs more Chinese spirit, never resign. Definitely. Black Black should really not resign this. Resigning was the biggest mistake of the game by far. <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, Zibadux says Katago... Um, Zibadux Katago says one handicap is 13 stones. So there you go. 13 points. One handicap. I basically never resigned before move 150. Has it have gone really, really bad for me to do so? Yeah, that makes sense. I, I, I support that. Um, consider a fighting Joseki, small knight move, attach Joseki. No one takes others four stones. Small knight move, attach Joseki. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure. But, oh well. Um, like... If you just actually, I'm 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 thinking of an example in Fuseki that maybe it's sort of close to what Delicious Dumpling is trying to discuss. Um, you guys know this Joseki, right? Um, this like AlphaGo. Um, do you play here now, and then here, and then here, and then here, and in a startling turns of it, turn of event, white Tanukis, and the whole point is sorry, black Tanukis. And the whole point is that black can capture these four stones. And white could capture these three stones, but nobody's bothering to do it, right? So I guess that's sort of the concept you were going at, even if it's not the right example, right? The famous Alpha Go Joseki, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, these black stones are cash point values in the opening is temperature. Mm. So 12 points, absolutely, so they're similar. Eh. <laughs> 13 points, yes. Uh, depends on whether you define value as difference with opponent playing there or difference with nobody playing. Yeah, yeah. That's actually... San, that's Sanman does a good job of elaborating why they're different. So let's go... Uh, let's go back to this game. When we're evaluating these 24 points, right? We're evaluating... the Like, we're evaluating what's the difference in, in score between us playing and the opponent playing. Whereas you could say, this is worth 12 points because if I don't play there, I have half of it because I could play it later. So it just depends on how you value it. Uh, I think you could count either way, just make sure to count the same way all the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so if we look at what happened in the game, Black did save his 24 points. But this whole area isn't Black's anymore, right? Black gave up everything for this group. And even though some people in the chat were saying it's enough points, and it is, we go back to the question, well, what do you need to do for your group, right? Here we already established black stones you know usually 12 stones would be super valuable but these these 12 stones are not too valuable in the sense that they aren't cutting off any groups they're not creating any weaknesses they are they are purely purely cash right just cash value and then if we consider that it's only cash value and if we consider how expensive it is to pull them out this isn't the way to go for black a fun fact about this game is that at this point, I actually said, like, I was thinking, oh, I want to cut here, give up the stones, and, like, go for my Marxist dream. And then Black Black actually cut, and I was like, oh, yes, Black cut, Black's gonna sacrifice, Black's gonna... Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, that was unfortunate. Um, yeah, it just comes consistently no matter what. How romantic. Is the area really white here either? Um... What do you mean if it's really white here? Uh, oh, it's not. It's not. So if, if we go to this position, this area isn't white. The point is that before it used to be blacks and now it's no ones. So black is missing out on a lot of cash, right? Um, I would usually hesitate to call Moyo cash, but this is closing in on it. I mean, I, I don't see this stone living or something. So relatively safe to call most of this cash. 
Mm. Black has barely any points yet. In the real game, yeah, Black has barely any points. Might as well play g16 and threaten to save it, but not really. Yeah, yeah. Actually, while I was reviewing the game, I suggested these two moves as alternatives. And both of them sort of develop the Moyo. And eventually, if you already have a stone like a g16, saving the stones will be easier than it would otherwise be. So I think that makes sense. Mm, if there were no outside consequences, you, you could just save that group without it, uh, any running. Would you save them? Yes. Yes, I would. Because, like, imagine the, the position were like this. Then I would definitely save them. Because Black still has a Moyo. Black's still strong everywhere. Black didn't sacrifice anything for the whole board plan. All you sacrificed is one move, right? You sacrificed Sente to get 24 points. Even a bit more. And 24 points is a lot. It's a lot of cash. So here I would save it. Definitely. Um, lose half of 100 points or something. Sort of, yeah. I mean, it's not that clean because, like, it's not that clear because Black's, Black's strength here will serve to reduce White's cornering, things like that. So it's not purely like you're losing 50 points, right? But you're losing a lot of value. Um, it's so hard to predict just how much you get reduced before or after a single move, though. Yes, that's true. Probably something a lot of people would have trouble with is in this situation... Uh, wait, where are you? Okay. In this situation, evaluating how deep can white go in this center. And I, I actually don't know too well either, but my opponent knows less, so it's fine. Um... If I had to guess, it's going to be something like white plays here. Or maybe... Maybe white can go really deep and uh, have some fun invading, I don't know. But uh, that's, a topic, that's a topic for a different lecture, I suppose. Um, if white cuts, then white can also capture the top two stones, so it makes more than 24 points. Yeah, yeah, that's true. If black responds 24 points... I mean, black won't answer, but it is true that white playing N15 gives some extra value um gives some extra value in terms of maybe later you can capture these two stones you have a bit more play on the side so it's more than 24 points just hard to say how much more because already the gains you're making aren't so tangible anymore so yeah this is a fun example i think um uh yeah i think uh this is enough for this example and let's let's move on to to some next one um I think. Okay, so. Okay, here, I think this example is interesting because I would never ever have considered, right, doing what, uh, what White did this game, but it was, it led to an interesting game. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun example. Um, this is, uh, a game played by a student of mine, and my student's white. Interesting, yeah, <laughs> interesting. Um, two set violin, anyone? I'm afraid I don't know, but, you know, interesting is code word for a bad, so. Black cut, and... Uh, yeah, and black cut again. And this is the situation where I would ask the viewers, do you want to save these two stones? And if so, how? What's your plan? Uh, this is a tougher question because there's a little bit of reading involved, right? Sacrilegious. I mean, if you like sacrificing, you're sacrilegious, I guess. So, um, lamentable. 40 hours a day. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Okay, a lot of people seem to know two set violin. Yeah, I'm I'm caught out of context here. I know nothing. Um, yeah, I mean, wh what is two set violin? Someone tell me. Um, Atari and jump. Uh, this Atari and jump. Delicious dumpling. Don't try to understand. <laughs> Ling Ling would be superb at go to. I guess that's more two set violin stuff. G seventeen maybe. G seventeen is a nice move. Oscar, you uncultured. <laughs> 40 hours of Sumega per day. Ah. It's too violinist to have a YouTube channel, I see. Yeah, I'm not 
particularly cultured in music, Sandman, I'm afraid. Um, yeah. Um, so, okay, we seem to be having a little bit of a consensus that we want to save the stones, right? That that That's what I'm seeing in chat. So someone suggested G17, right? Um, I don't know what exactly is the follow-up, but the idea is very nice. Um, and like, it's a good move. I'm just not sure what, what Baby Shambles had in mind when they suggested G17. Um, and someone suggested this, which is some way of trying to live on the side. So it seems we want to save. In the game, my student sacked and played this. So my student was like, eh, two stones. I'm going to cut you over here. And, and you know, you have two weak groups and I'm, I'm going to murder one of them or something, right? So he went for a fight that's probably favorable but unclear and gave up the two stones. Um, and it was an interesting decision. Oh boy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, what's worse is that it worked out for him, sort of, so... <laughs> white, is, white on the left is too weak to do this. Yes, you, you, you are sort of, um, reaching the point I want to make about this situation. What are these two stones doing? H15 and J15, what are they doing for white right now? Because they're only two stones. But these stones have a really, really important function, right? They they are not actually just loose stones that are worth nothing. Yeah, why did black save Q16 stones? Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't have done that either. But uh, that's an interesting uh, lecture topic as well. I, the reason I didn't ad address it, like the reason I didn't think of addressing it, is that I looked at this game, my student showed me this game, and I looked at it from the perspective of white, right? If if black plays bad, I'm not looking at that because black's not my student. But yeah, the, he's saving Q16 is a bit suspect. Um, they are cutting stones. Exactly. Those stones concern the strength and connection of the two opposing groups. Perfect, yes. So, in the game, right, these stones are rock-solid, strong bastions of strength for black. And what that means is that this group is actually sort of quailing now. So, you know, whenever Black has time, I mean, Black kind of doesn't have time right now because he's busy fighting, but Black plays this and White's super weak, right? Um, contrast that to, let's say White plays this, which is by far the best move. So uh, earlier, uh, Baby Shamble found this nice um, combo. It's, it's a good move because if Black plays like this, then you ladder the stone and you connect everything. And if black plays like this, then you live on much better terms, right? It's like someone suggested this Atari and this, but imagine now black played this for you. Would be very nice of black, wouldn't it? So if you start with G17, you're ensuring that. By far the best move. Um, and I think what would happen is this. And then what happens is white's alive on the top. Uh, we are not to disregard that white has taken at least, like, 15 points of value that black used to have in this area, right? All of these this stuff used to, like, in the game it's black. So, you know, we need to consider white gave up a lot of cash in the game as well, but even more importantly, these stones are now weak. They're also weak. So if black tries to do this, white does this, and, you know, white's threatening to get at you, you know? Like, nearly. So... These, these two stones being weak enables white's groups to have a lot more breathing room, right? So keeping these two stones alive is important because they're cutting everything. They're changing the life and death and the the strength of everything. And that's super, super important. Um, feels like white swapped. Plans mid-commitment the way he played. Why play like that on the left side if you just end up leaving them? Um, well, yeah, that's that's a good point. I think... Probably white's mindset here was I create these stones on the left and then black cut which surprised white I don't think white expected black to cut an empty triangle because cutting an empty triangle is usually not advisable let's say and then white because things didn't go as expected white found a different thing to play that's my guess um 
Now, something rather interesting about this game is that later Black chose to save these stones, where maybe one's instinct would be to s sacrifice these stones as well and just jump out with the group, and then it's actually not clear whether these guys or these guys are stronger. So white, like these two black stones are much, much less valuable than these two white stones. So black, black very clearly is ahead here. Uh, that's probably a bigger mistake than one white did first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think black's decision to connect is questionable, but this doesn't lead to a clearly worse result. This leads to an unclear fight because black actually has a lot of counterplay here. Like, imagine that black connects R13. Black's already threatening to kill white in the corner. Really complicated fight. So actually, Q14 might even be fine. It's just really risky. Um, yeah, m makes sense, white's decision-making process. I mean, I hope it makes sense. He's my student, I should know. Um, uh, so yeah, this, this was another interesting situation where stones do matter, right? And the core concept is always consider what the stones do for you and what you need to do for them. I think those it's a, a way that I find useful of summarizing it. Um, so now, um, I probably am going to go and do a couple of examples where it's a bit less, like up to up until now, all of the examples I've used have sort of a clear answer. Like, in my opinion, the players clearly played wrong, right? To the detriment of their position. And here I compiled a couple of examples where it's a little bit more of a discussion, right? Um, my problem would be not being able to read out any way for the two stones to live. Well, yeah, that, I guess. I mean, if, if we look at this position, um, so if we look at this position here, it's sort of easy to live, it's just hard to live in a really good way. Like if you if you don't see G17, then you're probably still gonna do this, this, and this. Or actually you can you can still hane, which is sort of nice, right? And then do this, this, and this, and this is gonna live, it just doesn't live on as fortunate uh in terms that are as fortunate as white could. But it's not hard to find this. Um before I did more group focus, I started with database with the database importance of stones and sorted them into like five to ten different categories. This lecture feels slightly like a blast from the past for me. Not the diminishing the value of those lessons in any way, of course. Well, yeah, I mean, for sure that's... I, I'm guessing that that probably helped you improve because... People's... People's decision making around loose stones or groups is all, is, is generally bias towards saving the stones, right? So it's an important bias to try and take care of. Interestingly, I'm showing an example where my student did the opposite thing. He sacrificed stones a little bit too liberally. But most of the examples that I have shown so far uh, in this lecture uh, would be, you know, people saving stones unnecessarily. Um, I thank you, didn't mean to interrupt. No, no problem. I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm here for you guys to interrupt me. That's like the whole point. Like, if I didn't want to to interrupt me, like, if if the lectures weren't for people to interrupt, we'd just post vods, you know. So, in interrupt at your leisure. Um. Okay. So these examples are a little bit more fun. Um. Yet another private student of mine recently played a game. By the way, another reason that I did this lecture is that this has been a topic that a couple of my students have sort of encountered in the recent, um, uh, in the recent past. Uh, this is a game played um, in the Corona Cup, actually. Uh, this lecture has been a whole political interruption, yes. But we understand go through politics, that's fine. And there's this interesting fight. Um, my my student is black, um, and black left like this sort of weak shape, weakness kind of thing, and white was too early to exploit it, and black got a double ponuki, and the game develops into this situation where both players have running groups, right? And, like, both of these guys are not entirely alive, 
and not entirely strong. Um, and black, black is probably a bit better because black got six extra points and a free ponuki with this. And white doesn't clearly have compensation for that. Um, but the game's okay for both players. That's a poor decision. What's a poor decision? Oh, uh, allowing you to interrupt at your leisure. It's sort of working out, so I don't know. Um, so, okay. Um, the stones I'm going to ask you to evaluate this time are these two guys. Ah, uh, th this Joseki choice by white. I think the Joseki choice was fine. Um, <laughs> I think the Joseki choice was okay. But white, like, I think jumping here is fine. Like, I think this is... This would have been okay for white if white just keeps jumping, right? This this is like the game, except white didn't give black a two stone ponuki. <laughs> Only difference. Um, black d14 is better than knight, knight, knight's move. Yes, yes. Always better. Like, uh, this is something I, I talked to my student about. You need to push because you want to use the edgy of the shortage of liberties of white's uh, d17 stone. So later, you can get this incente, you can get this hane incente. So, and also you don't leave a peep. Like this, you leave a peep for later. So definitely Black Leaf 14 is better, but it's a bit off topic. Let's go back to the, the, the question I, I wanted to ask you guys. Save or not save the marked stones? Do you think these stones are important? Um, and this is, this, it's an interesting discussion I had with my, with my student here. I think save, save, we all save. Run first. An I incente. Is it incente? Don't save it now. Run first. Okay, so we have two runs, at, but run first seems to imply that you want to save the stones at some point, right? Only one gote eye for white. Yeah, it's a gote eye for white, and I, I don't think black it, black's thing is sent there, right? I mean... What's the threat for black if white just jumps? Well, I mean, you can live with the next move, not really sent there, right? Oh, oh, okay. So, I mean, so what you're saying is that if white plays, it's sent there to make life, right? Um, I mean, it's sent there to make life. Yes, that's true. But that doesn't mean that black is going to try to kill after white plays d7. So, um, so it's not entirely sent there. It, it's only sent there if black wants to keep attacking. Um, so, um, yeah, only one gote for white. Save only if taking an eye in gote matters, or if you really want four points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make a good point, Miko. So far, uh, I think our thought process is somewhat aligned. Black can play J9 first, threat, like, threaten white to take the stones. So you want to play j9, and if white plays this, I guess, do you want to keep attacking? Do you want to play this and make white live? Do you want to, um, oh, not save as, uh, do you want to, like, hane and keep attacking? Do you want a tanuki? All possible, right? Um, so, basically, it seems that chat has an idea that the stones are valuable because you can maybe attack. But also that maybe it's not the right time to uh, to save. For some people it is, for some people it isn't. No, maybe just more stones in the center is better than playing inside. Yeah, yeah, maybe just more stones in the center is better playing than playing inside. You don't know, right? Uh, so if 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 we do this, right, and this, and force white to live, well, black lost a few points because white got points by living, right? Two stones, a ten, end game. But black could say my stones are more valuable than that. You could do that. That's fine. Um, in the game, black jumped once. And then he saved. Right? And in fact, saving in this situ like saving in this situation is a little bit more reasonable after white has already exchanged this. Because if we if we check the game. Black has some very, very interesting Aji later with this stuff, right? 
right, this kind of cutting stuff is very interesting now for black. Um, this would be like the over-eager eager attacking, I have a bad habit of doing ATM. But he's not technically alive yet. Jump again, now it's worse. Both are more alive. Okay, so people are sort of leaning in the direction of not connecting. I would argue that connection does have the plus that you open up this weakness. But I also think this weakness isn't that spectacular, right? Um, White can play d11. Um, well, ah, you want to play d11 in answer to the Atari. That's an interesting idea, but okay, what if I wedge first, though? Do you want to, like, I, I, I think here White still has an issue. So that's actually a nice move. I, I blind spotted that. I didn't see that move. It's a nice find. Um, I mean, like, this black's definitely cutting somehow. Mm. But okay. Black decided to save. So maybe in disagreement with most of you at this point, because you're like, oh, both of the groups are sort of out. This is a bit of a difficult investment to make. Um, so... This decision is interesting because it's true that White's group isn't so weak. I mean, let's say that, you know, White plays here. I mean, what's Black's next move? Black's connect, Black, like, White's already connected because this doesn't work anymore. And very hard to even find the next move for Black. You're not really achieving anything, right? Um... Then again, you could argue that if white plays an empty move in the center, and I get to Tanuki and play here, then I got four stone, four, four points in Sente, right? Four points in Sente is good. Um, oh wait, also, also I just realized, oh, this is interesting. I, I missed this while I was reviewing the game with my student. What about this move? Interesting Aji, right? I mean, if white plays here, you wedge. Right? And white's cut. And if not, you have a ko. So, you know, maybe white even has to play this move or something to protect the Yadzi. Um So it creates a lot of uncomfortable weaknesses, specifically after white played e6. e6 is a really uh, badly timed move. My instinct when I saw this move, um, and my instinct still holds even when I see this Aji for black is that it's a bit too small um, and, and a bit too slow and I'd say that the reason is that even if white just plays some normal move it's very difficult for black to really use this like what, what does even now black has trouble finding the next move I mean you could do this you could cut here, but it's very difficult to see what you're achieving, right? You just cut off two random stones and help the rest of the white group run to safety. If black wants to do this, black can start a co and fight for half of 20 points, right? You can. Um, but I think as white, white might even tenuki or something. Like, white's group, white doesn't have to care that much about this group, right? Maybe this, maybe maybe now here. Um, so, could white even consider sacking the leftmost half of the group? Yeah, yeah, that, that's exactly your comment is timed as I was discussing it, right? I think if white... Plenty of space in the center, but I don't know if it's too big. I mean, the point is that the center is kind of empty, right? Uh, because black doesn't have, like, a big Moyo framework, white doesn't have a big Moyo framework, obviously very hard for anyone to make points here. The type of move I'd be looking at if I were either player is like approaching here, approaching here. Of course, white has the weak group to take care of, right? And that's, that's we need to evaluate how weak um, J10 is. Um, depends on how strong weak J8 is though. J8 is pretty strong after C7 because of this, right? So you could say that 
see like these two stones are doing a surprisingly large amount of things because eventually you're going to be able to wedge or you're going to be able to play this and by virtue of these weaknesses suddenly black's group is much stronger and white's group is much weaker right uh, yes right now i mean a bit down the line yeah okay 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 that's right now it's fine but you're saying oh what if white what if white even plays this or something if white just defends the shape which is reasonable right white could say oh i want to keep my points right and i still don't see a way for you to attack me i mean i'll just i'll just run right um and maybe white's not too worried about this right and he can say, oh, I'm fine, black group is fine, but maybe later it won't be fine and I can attack it. All of this is reasonable. Um, but actually, I'm thinking that if white defends, then this exchange is actually favorable to black. Because black got four points for free. Like, white's move isn't making any points. So black took an eye and weakened white's shape in sente, four points, right? D7 and whatever white plays... Um, D7 and whatever it plays seems like a bad exchange for black, no matter how you see it. D7. D7 is this move? I'm not sure if D7... I think you mean... I think you mean C7. But I'm actually not sure I agree with that it's a bad exchange for black, because black's exchange... Like, if white... If white plays something like this move, defending, right? Like, we can say that if you play here, you haven't properly defended because there's still this Aji. And if you defend like this, well, either move you play, how much are these moves actually getting white, right? May they're getting white some ice space, but black just took some ice space as well, so maybe white's group doesn't necessarily have more ice space. White's move definitely make less than four points, right? So black's move is actually gaining a few points, right? Um, Incente. So in my mind, the only way white could punish this is to tanuki and treat the stones on the left very lightly. That's the only punishment I can find. Otherwise, black's move is probably fine in a subtle way. Now, to be fair, I asked most of you this question before this exchange was made, and this exchange looks really innocent, right? But the fact that these two white stones have fewer liberties is really important all of a sudden. So it was unfair of me to ask the question at the timing that I did. Um, the problem I, I just have with it is that white is not in a hurry to play that move. Are you sure about that? I mean, if I saw, like, if I saw this and I'm like, oh, if black plays this, I'm going to have to play here. Maybe, maybe I am in a hurry to play this. I don't know. Right? Um, I I really think the only the I mean, I mean you guys are perfectly free to disagree. I think the main punishment for this move White could think of is Tanuki. Um, and I'm not sure if it's a punishment, so maybe Black's move is fine. Um, doesn't Black require at least three local moves to kill White? It depends on which part of White you want to kill, right? Because if like if you play this. And then this, then you're killing half of it. Well, not half. You're killing most of it in two moves. If you want to kill all of it, I guess you need something like this. Yeah, so something like three moves. Do you, so you think white plays c7 next? I'm saying I'm not sure. I'm saying there's a very strong argument for it. And that's why this question is at the end of the lecture, and it's a bit of a not sure situation because... And, and now I'm even more not sure, because when I looked at the game originally... I was thinking, well, black has some long-term attacking chances and the F10 cutting point and etc, etc, but no immediate compensation. So I thought black shouldn't connect. But now as I was doing this lecture, I saw, wait, black has this. And this is immediately a flower code that black can start for the left side, right? So I would missed this actually when my student showed it to me, which is sort of bad. And... Now that I see it, it actually really makes it a not sure for me. Um, so that's interesting. The question is still valid. Not sure which question, but um, I guess the question of connecting here or not is still valid even if white doesn't want to connect. Even if it's not white's next move, it might be black's next move. 
Can that be the case? Not sure. Hmm. Um, the original question. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I think this is actually really a not clear situation. Um, I asked the computer, um, why does it need to take that e5? Yeah, taking e5 is really bad. Um, the original question is a little bit less valid, but still somewhat valid, right? Because after white took e5, uh, you know, we've all agreed, Mika also points out that it's a bad exchange for, for black. Sorry, so not for black, for white, because of the liberty that you're taking. But now this actually still exists. It doesn't exist any less. So white e5, white, white capturing e5 hurts white, but it doesn't hurt white that much. So the original question is actually still a little bit interesting. It's it's a bit less um, annoying, but black c7 is always annoying here. And it's very hard for me to say if it's annoying enough. I checked with the computer and the computer said that c7 is like minus 7% or something. Um, I checked it very quickly out of curiosity and I'm I'm not sure about what white's refutation is. I didn't check. So for some reason the computer thinks it's minus seven. I don't know why. Um, like I didn't check. I didn't really check enough. Or uh, maybe I did and I forgot. I'm uh, not that bad then. Yeah, but it's hard for me to say. For which reasons is it not bad? Is it because, like, well, is it is it because white plays here and I'm mistaken, and this is a good exchange for white? Like, am I am I wrong? Right, and it, this is a good exchange for white. Or is this an even exchange? I could imagine it's an even exchange because white's white stone is on, on the outside, so it's like influencing the game more than black is, right? Um, depends. Was it equal before at ninety three percent? Black has like seventy percent here. Black's a bit better. Um, so maybe it's this, or maybe it's that white treats the stones lightly and just starts tanukiing. I'm not sure which. It's actually an interesting question. I'm I'm unsure. Um, okay. Um, I think I, I had a couple more examples, but, uh, we've already been, uh, live for like hour 20, so I might wrap it up here. The last example was like, eh, not that interesting. This one was the one I really wanted to get through because it's, it, it gets to a lot of the topics that we've discussed this lesson, right? This lecture, um, unfortunately not the one of how expensive it is to save stones because saving like saving the stone costs only one move right uh, it doesn't cost anything else like some of the other examples we've checked but it does use a lot of the other concepts and it's just a very interesting question that i wasn't sure about when my student showed it to me so um yeah minus seven percent perfectly playable for amateur law uh to, yeah so i mean if, if i see minus seven percent on a computer i'm not too concerned for my moves for my students, I'm definitely not. So, um, there, yeah. <laughs> um, it did, like, I might be concerned about it, but not because of what the bot says. That's my point. Um, 7% it's like, oh, it doesn't like it. Not necessarily too bad. Um, anyway, uh, that'll probably be all for this lecture in terms of what I'm showing. If anyone wants to ask any questions or revisit any of the, of any of the examples, uh, we can do that. Um, you're you're free to fire away. Um, in the meanwhile, uh, I have I chose not to shout out any new followers uh, during the the stream uh, because I didn't necessarily want to break the flow of the lecture. But I'll I'll do that now. Um, the Miko followed. I'm uh, yeah. Thank you for following. An NGD regular, I I, I guess. Um, the the Shin the Shino uh, followed. Thank you for that. Um, and uh, Laogan M Laogan M4 Laogan something like that Laogan M4 uh, followed. Uh, thank you, thank you very much for that. Um, and uh, Vogalina followed. Um, a frequent commenter this lecture. Um, really excellent lecture. So thank you very much, Sander. Thank you for providing material. I'm uh, much appreciated. Thanks for the lecture. Didn't know about these great stuff. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the lesson. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you everyone for for coming. Uh, NGD lectures happen every two weeks. Um, um, 
Yeah, thanks, Cesar, Ken, for coming. Uh, so in two weeks, not me, but another Nordico Dojo teacher will will come and struggle with my overlays. Um, and that's probably all for the NGD. I will mention that I'm streaming today. Um, like, I will be streaming today in, like, maybe hour and a half on my own channel, so I'll just be messing around and doing my normal streams. Um, and yeah, that's all. Yeah, uh, pick up some milk. Oh, Lurker. First comment, I think. Uh, yeah, thanks for the lecture. Thanks for watching. Yeah, bye everyone.